build an audience before you need it. If you're thinking about making the leap, then build a runway, build a financial runway, build evidence, build a community. The epicenter of the storm is the energy. You want to create a massive amount of energy for what you want to do. When you've met somebody like Tony Robbins, who's so clear about that outcome, people want to follow because they know where he's going. He's not being inconsistent. He's energy moving in direction is like marketing and business. If you're trying to make impact, what you might want to ask yourself why people aren't following is maybe you're not being clear. Energy isn't clear. When you're clear about your purpose, you'll wake up at a bed and you'll have energy for it. You'll do stuff. People feel it. They want to be part of it. When you don't, it's different. That's the beginning of the unseen wave of business growth is clarity of purpose and direction. Think of your values, the shifting to who you want to serve and would love to wake up and serve as values that will transform the way that you show up and the energy you have for it. When you create more trust, you create less friction. When you create more trust, you can create experiences. And when you're creating experiences and you're trying to change people's lives, there's an important word you want to say to yourself. Good day, everyone. I am so excited to have my special guest today. I tell you what, first of all, welcome to Jill Collins Connections. We have another Summit Life Experience interview today. And I've been begging this guy, honestly, to come and get be on my my channel and interview him. He is just one of my favorite people on the planet. And he knows I he's, that's true because I tell him that all the time. Every time I see him, I want to introduce everyone to Scott Martin. Scott Martin is a brand strategist, an entrepreneur, an author, and a podcaster. He's also the husband of the most amazing woman, Jillyfish, as he calls her. And I've had the pleasure of meeting them through my Platinum Partners experience with Tony Robbins. And I think we met for the first time, Scott, was it at business, the finance in Sun Valley, maybe in 2020? I think we I was, met him. I wasn't at Sun Valley. Yeah. Okay. We may have met then. I guess we probably met in person somewhere else, but I think we're really connected with you other than just during that pandemic year, when we were all doing zoom calls and trying to get to know each other and finding ways to connect was in 2021 when clubhouse became the thing. And someone invited me and said, Hey, you should jump on clubhouse. I'm like, what is that? So I did. And I think my aunt, my birthday, as they call it, there is January 1st, 2021. And I just navigated through. I didn't really, I knew, saw some people I knew and I connected with you on a Sunday. You had your Sunday rooms. And I have to say, I want to thank you so much for how you showed me the way there. And you got me involved and you introduced me to people and got me in different rooms and got me on stages. And as I say about Clubhouse is that year of Clubhouse for me in 2021 is where I really found my voice and I really developed confidence and realized how much value that I can add with the experience that I've experiences and things I've gone through. So I want to thank you for that. So Welcome. at this point, yeah, I want to take a moment. Scott, tell us about yourself. I'd love to hear more about what you're up to. And, and again, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You're like a sister to me. What am I up to? Probably the most significant thing is I just finished publishing my book, Groundswell, The Unseen Wave of Business Growth, four years in the making. And a lot of some of the concepts that are from the book, I applied in, in the experience you had in Clubhouse. We're talking about the Sunday rooms. I think they were called the Mindful Marketer rooms. I did those for, I don't know, six months or something, eight months. And they became very popular rooms. So there's people still today message and tell me I got I found a message somebody said that was like my church that was like are you going to do them again I get so many requests and I'm actually truth be told I'm actually going to do it again I'm going to I'm going to try awesome. to go back on clubhouse and do it again and I think what made them so special and magical and why you connected to it was you know it's it, we created a space where we were really being open and curious about what is the possibility of spirituality, energy, nature, all into marketing and business? And for me, I'm just like this knuckle dragging, chainsaw yielding, yeah. bacon eating dude, and and just bringing all these like people from all different sort of disciplines. And and then we just really had an incredible time just navigating the conversations because they were super interesting, and, and it was just more of a collaboration than anything else. So that was really awesome. Outside of the book, probably the biggest thing is I've launched my community. I'm out of beta. We have about not, almost 900 members now. It's called the Groundswell in a Circle. And that's been my pride and joy. It's a it's basically a eating my own dog food of like actually helping other creators, other entrepreneurs, other artists to be able to build their business sustainably with sovereignty and build a groundswell. And we can talk about where we want to go with that. But that's probably the biggest thing is I'm about building community now. 
Well, that's what I was going to say about you too, is I wanted to give you an opportunity to say something too at the beginning. And I'll tell you what, this is something, if someone said, because my whole channel of Jill Collins Connections in my community is all about like best in class and whatever they do, an, an individual does. And I would say for you, and I always say this, is you are the best in class in community building and collaboration, brand strategy, everything like that. But what's unique about you is that I, why I so resonate with you is the fact that you're really about impact creators, people that want to do something with their lives that creates an impact. And so your focus is sustainable growth marketing. I know we've talked about that and that was the, your room and on Clubhouse. But going back, I think that's just so pivotal. And I really appreciate about that about you. Another thing though that comes to mind when we're in Platinum Partners now and we're in all these WhatsApp groups with the Platinum Partners and everyone's got a webinar and they're pitching something and they're selling something and they've got these ideas and they're wanting, how do I make money? How do I do the funnels and sell my courses or my programs or my coaching? And it seems like we're just inundated and it's like we're selling to each other. We're all, we're already, we're, set, we're preaching to the choir. And I think sometimes it's, how do we get noticed? How do we get recognition? One would be one of my questions for you is, but before that, I think as I've struggled myself is finding what am I really good at? What is it that, who is, what is uniquely me instead of looking at what everybody else is doing and saying, I should be doing that too. Oh, if, if someone's selling a program and they're making a lot of money doing that, I should build a program. What, what could I teach? And then you back into it versus finding that purpose first. And so I really want this part of this is people who are watching this to say, to walk away going, first thing I got to do is know my purpose and how do I do that? And then how can I work with Scott or someone who really understands how to walk me through that and hold my hand to get to where I need to go to, to make the most impact possible for the world? So is the question about how, purpose? About purpose. I think maybe someone's going to go, let's maybe do a little deeper question because if someone goes, great, yeah, I want to have a purpose. But it's like, what would be the reason you'd want to have a purpose? There's this great quote from Tony Robbins, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And how many times have people done a program, chased the trend of, oh, there's everybody's doing this, AI, let's go do that. And they're distracted. It's a zigzag of energy, right? So the birth of what I've created within Groundswell is I've looked at patterns. I've seen a differentiation pattern. So I've been, like in marketing for 25 years, I've done anything you can think of in marketing. And I'm a nerd. I'll go and do it to its umph degree. Like I have my own film production company. I built websites, apps, like billboards, print. I had a direct response agency for 10 years. I've done it all. And I still, to this day, you know, I have, I launched my own currency, NFT. I'm now doing AI. So I'm like, I'm always like hands-on because I believe when you're going to take advice from somebody about something as so important as like the strategy, the brand, and then ultimately how do you actually communicate and connect with your audience, aka marketing, you need to understand the point of view of the person you're taking advice from. And this is where I don't have the, here's the template. I have the blueprint. There's a difference. Template, hmm. follow exactly what I'm saying, because that makes sense for marketers. They want to do that because then you follow their template and it's repeatable and they can scale. A blueprint is something different. I teach you how to think about it because I don't, I believe every single person has a different path. I, like my whole point of grounds was I'm going, everyone is different. How can that one strategy work for Jill and work for Joe and work for Scott? It can't be because you have a different sort of energy. You have different resources. You're a different stage of life. You have a different understanding of the topic or the capability. There's all these factors. So I really break it down to go, here's how you think about those things. So back to your com comment about purpose. What I've identified in the patterns is I've looked at growth. The one I heard once somewhere a long time ago, if you want to make a big dent in the universe, how to solve the unsolvable problem. And I'm like, I want to make one. And what was the problem I wanted to solve? I'm in marketing. I'm like, I've been obsessing over how to market without marketing. Seriously, huh. that is, I'm like, is it possible to market? With, and this, by the way, it is true. And it's, it's like, how could even more than how to market without marketing? Because that, that has some energy, but I'm like, even better. How could you create exponential growth with decreasing costs, decreasing marketing and less economic waste? So I basically set out on the journey of the last 10 years, I coined sustainable growth marketing. And that's what I've been studying. My podcast over the last five years, I've interviewed the top people in marketing, asking the questions that have given me the DNA, or actually it's really more about, I already had the plan. I already knew what it was. 
it just gave me the confidence to write the book because I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So I am not so far off. So one of the things that I've identified is if you want to create exponential growth, look at other patterns of company. Let's take Apple. Apple was a leader led company, right? Steve Jobs was the leader. He had a clear vision. Okay. You look at the, I see the pattern of companies that created Groundswell. So Groundswell, I'm going to describe of why going, it's going to go back to purpose. It's going to go back to the story is a groundswell described as a wave that is, it starts with a storm. It's way out in the ocean. It's like super powerful. It's concentrated. But if you ever watched the show Castaway, you know, it's like at first the storm is like all crazy and go different directions. That's like a lot of people with their plans. They're, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to do different things. But then they, they start going in a direction. Okay, actually, I think I'm going to focus on this. That's like the wave starting to line up. And what happens when these waves, they start meeting, the chaos starts turning into a little bit of formation. That formation mm-hmm. is exponential growth because now it's less, more surface area that allows it to, and when the storm starts shifting and moving into one consistent direction, that's when you see from the plane, you see these, looks like soldiers marching towards the coastline, like corduroy jeans. That's a ground spot. That's a, it hits the ocean floor. It's like powerful, right? Think of that as radiating energy. How did that happen? Concentration and almost think of centrifugal circles, right? I call it your epic center. Your epic center is you. When you have clarity of direction. Epi- epicenter or epic center? Epic center. But epic- it's the epicenter of a storm, but I call it the epic center for the person. Okay, cool. I kind of play on words a little bit. So it. epic center, you need to know your epic center. And what's your epic outcome? What is it that you want to do? It's about epic is something that's big. It's so scary. It's like it throws, that's my, my unsolvable problem, the dent in the universe. That's a big, that's a big vision. So people that want to build a groundswell, they're not going after small things. They're going, I want to make impact. That's who this speaks to. This would this what this expression of purpose is going to speak to that person, someone who's trying to make impact in the world. They're trying to create something. They're, there's a bit of an artist in them. They know that they can create something so different and differentiated. Now the challenge is when you aren't clear on your purpose and direction, how many times do you start something and move? You get Pulled in a direction. Someone says, oh, can you come over and do this? Jill, you did this. I've you, done you, this you, many times. I was going to say, yeah. And I was trying to, I think I even told you, I go, I think you might want to. It's like, <laughs> what it is, it's a zigzag. And we've all done it. We've all done it. And it's, there's no judgment. But what we realize at some point in time, when you get clarity, if you invested the time and clarity in going in the direction, and that direction is your values. The values and the direction. When you're a business that people want to follow, a groundswell is also an uprising people that are coming together for a cause, right? Think of a movement. It starts as a movement. People go, I want to create a movement. I'm like, why stop there? I'm like, think of maybe Black Lives Matter. That was a movement, but it wasn't meant to be a movement. Really, it wanted to go and create change. Even then, it wasn't just trying to create change. It was actually we're trying to transform the way we treat each other as humans. If you think about really the logic of it, I call it move, change, transform. I'll get to that in a second. It's like the waves. Going back to your purpose, if you're clear about your purpose, and you have these values and you're trying to move energy in that same direction, you're trying to change to create these waves of interest and ultimately transform the world. That's how people follow. So you think of Apple, it's not Patagonia, different brands. It's not just about nonprofits. It's actually, this is a, this, my whole thing is purpose, profit, and passion. Those three, those are the three elements, right? When you have those together and you're going in that direction, that is what creates the storm. So when you want to build a brand and you think about, how does someone build a groundswell? You have infinite energy when you've really aligned this. The reason you don't have energy, if you listen to this, you ask yourself, the reason you have energy is you realize it's not really aligned with your values. Mm-hmm. Whenever that's off, you, there's, you feel weird. You feel like there's an icky feeling. You, you wake up and you're exhausted of it. When you're working with somebody or something or a business that's not aligned with your values, your energy drops. I know it's true. If anybody here, I will challenge anybody. It's totally, I, it's a, I agree with you. a law of gravity. It's, it is. But what we do is we go, we think our brain goes, I, this is supposed to be hot AI. And you're just doing it because you, you were told by a marketer that this template works. It doesn't matter if you're marketing and marketing against your values. Like sometimes people market and they go, I don't, this doesn't feel right. Marketers will go, that's what you need to do if you want to grow on Instagram. And I'm like, no, maybe there's some information there. Trust your gut. I did this great podcast with Guru Singh. And he talks about your gut intelligence. There's more truth to these feelings. And that's going to put the woo people in woo-woo are going to go, this is all woo-woo. It's, no, this is actually math. But it's if you actually trust yourself that either it's fear, I don't know what to do, or it's your it's a warning or a signal to go, hey, you're off course. Huh? So when, but no, you've met somebody 
like Tony Robbins, who's so clear about that outcome, people want to follow because they know where he's going. They is not being inconsistent. He's so this energy moving in a direction is like marketing and business. If you're trying to make impact, what you might want to ask yourself why people aren't following is maybe you're not being clear. Maybe you're not energy isn't clear. And more importantly, this never ending energy, okay, is when you're clear about your purpose, you'll wake up out of bed and you'll have energy for it. You'll do stuff. People feel it. They want to be part of it. When you don't, it's different. That is what I'm seeing is the, un, that's the beginning of the unseen wave of business growth is clarity of purpose and direction. Clarity of purpose and direction. And I think that's where we're getting so overwhelmed. And I love what you just said, because that's something that I've discovered in the past, I don't know, this year at this point, a few months ago, as I'm working on my intuition more in the spiritual side of things, and just how much my intuition is my intuition, trusting it, learning to trust it. And hearing that voice that says, I'm a, if anybody's into human design, it's I'm a generator. And I have these, the four, six, which is like a, uh-huh, uh-huh reaction. So when I know, and I immediately go, uh-uh, and then my brain starts to go, but you know what? You should try that because everybody else is doing it. Come on. That's even the people you respect the most, they're telling you to do it. And then we start to try that, take that, ang- that, that, take that path. And here's where I can check in is the next step is I start, my body starts to react and I can feel like in my gut feelings, key indicators are feeling senses of overwhelm, of putting it off, of procrastinating. Now there can be other reasons, like you said, is it checking in? Is it fear? Because I don't know what to do or how to do it. Or is it just, I'm resisting, like I've been resisting creating another program or selling or one-on-one coaching, for example, my, for my, to do that for my business. And I'm like, why am I resisting that? And it finally hit me. That's not what I'm supposed to do. And, but everybody's doing it. And I started this program. I actually created a program and a brand a few years ago that by the time I got through and spent all the money and worked on it, I realized it's not what I wanted to do. And, but it helped me get through that process of working with divorced and widowed women. I did did create the program. It helped me go through my own journey. Thank you. And that was grateful for that. I was grateful for that, but also I learned how to create that. So that's good. There were good things out of that came out of that, but I wasted a lot of time figuring that out. And I don't regret that, but I think that I can save people time. You can save people time by figuring this out is that really checking in like today, knowing that like finally figuring out this whole thing with interviewing and helping people connect with other people. This is who I've been. This is always who I've been, but putting it in a really nice package. And I'm still like you said, I'm at the point where the waves are starting to come together and I'm going like, yeah, okay, this is making sense, but not getting in the weeds with, I should probably also create a funnel and start selling and doing this other thing over here. And sure. People say you need to do that. Okay. But I'm not like saying, I'm not, I want to keep my eye on the ball. I just, I, right now this feels right for me. And so I think it's like you said, it's getting out of bed in the morning going, oh my God, I get to talk to Scott today. I can't wait. And I can't wait to share Scott with everybody that, that watches this. And that's when I light up. So knowing when I light up, I think that's really helpful in the values. Like you said, knowing our values. So that, that little, when you talked about the little distinction, I'll add to that is, so this is my Scott's point of view different probably i am by the way the contrary and i am so not conventional i know that i'm like a heretic in my business so i get it and i don't mind it one bit because i just ask you tell me if it feels right and i'll show you the evidence of it working here's an example you just said that like you, yeah you there's like like you don't you're not sure about one-to-one coaching and stuff and your intuition is reading that i would argue it it doesn't it's not a pass or fail it's not that black or white it might mean it's just out of order think about prioritization because it's your body, it's just saying, what should I be doing next? Now, the problem is that sometimes we go, I think I need to be doing that next. I, but I would have a little framework for you that everyone's listening. It's called ICE. And it's actually based on, it started with and almost even my get, grow, keep. My framework for Groundswell is based on Don Pepper's get, grow, keep. But anyways, this model is a growth hack. He's one of the top growth hackers in the world. He's a growth scientist and very logical side. And he came up with a framework called ICE, impact, confidence, and ease. And if you take your ideas, the things that you're feeling uncertain about, and if you remove, so if you think of Tony Robbins, he has a decision-making tool. If you keep it in your head, you actually can't solve the problem. So this is the same way of prioritization, getting clarity of focus. So think of ICE. Take your ideas and put them on down. And then the first one, ICE stands for, ironically, impact. What is the impact? How This idea you want to do, is it a 10 or is it a zero? Rate it. Confident. How confident are that you can do this? zero to 10. How easy is it? Zero to 10. All those matter, right? Then I would say that's the logic side. Now let's go to a little different side because 
that worked for me for a while. And then I kept on bumping against things that still weren't congruent with me. And I realized, oh, this is actually incomplete. There's another side of the brain. And the other side of the brain is still ice. It's called identity, congruency, energy. Does this fit with my identity, my personal identity? For example, I do not love, you. even though everyone says you need to be on Zooms and TikTok and doing this. Have you ever seen me do that? Probably hardly ever. I don't. And it's something I'm going to move towards, but it's, it's I'll explain how I'm going to get to it later, but it's, it's not in priority for me right now. Okay. For me, identity is not part of my brand. It's not like my style, right? It, it, so think of your brand. So maybe your brand is your audience isn't necessarily on TikTok or something, right? So identity, two, congruency. Is it congruent with your values? This is a big thing. A lot of people are doing stuff like click funnels and it feels icky. And I'd be argue it's probably because it's not congruent with your values because you feel like you're entrapping people or you're being fake or templating or it's not you, right? And the other might be congruency of systems, right? Is it a, I'm a PC, per, I'm a Mac person, but it's a PC idea, for example, whatever. So congruency. And the last and the most important is energy. Do you have the energy for it? So if you really want to build a groundswell, start with the most energy first. You may have to get to it, but when you have, by the time you have enough momentum, you might have enough momentum that it doesn't take that much energy or you don't need to, by the time you get to it, the things you have less energy for. Because if you think of what stops people in zigzagging is they ran out of energy for it. I'm doing this. It doesn't feel right. I don't like it. How many people have built half built click funnels and they're still sitting there today or landing pages or different things? I, it's, it's countless. It's because of this. They didn't prioritize and they didn't have the energy for it. So that's my point is the epicenter of the storm is the energy. You want to create a massive amount of energy for what you want to do. You have so much energy for this. This is going to build your ground. So it's your ripple, right? You have so much energy for it and it's going to build on it. I started my podcast. I did not have energy for, I, did, I'm, I am not one that's in front of the camera as much now. I'm doing more now, but I did, even when you, I could have done videos on my podcast, the first three years I did only audio. Why? I had the most energy for it. Thank God. I've got one of the best podcasts in marketing, right? Like do, I just need right, to do it very right. narrow, right? The Grand Canyon was made from a narrow river, not a wide river. The Grand Canyon. That's a great analogy. I love that. That's a great visual. Oh my gosh. I, I remember when you were telling me, I remember we, maybe a couple of years ago it was, we talked and I was, and I was, I'm always asking for Scott for advice. And so I was thinking about starting a business with someone and I remember you giving me this sage advice and I didn't take it and I probably should have, but I learned always learning lessons through things that I do that I end up not, things not working out. We all do, but you said, just do it yourself. And I realized, learned something about myself after that is how much I have the tendency to hitch on other people's wagons and, or in the past I did. And it was out of fear of doing it alone and having having it be all about um, on me or all about me or all like the responsibility, but also just, I think it was just that fear of what could happen. And so I'm grateful to you for the advice that you've always given me. And then also showing me the way a lot of, within so many places in life. So thank you for I, that. I think you were really good. Like you, you're the, you mastered the number two role. You really, that's a really important role for anyone in business, the integrator, the person that works with the visionary. And you are, you like, that's what I saw you as you just, I just think that you just topped out. You were like, you weren't having any more energy for it. You were at the peak of it. Like you were, you could do a master class on how to be a number two in supporting <laughs> roles. Like, I mean, like you, but you just, you didn't have more energy for it. That's all. Does that make sense? Like it wasn't that, I think maybe fear had something to do with it, but I think that fear was more about taking the next step mm -hmm. for you. Some people that's where they are and that's what they love. And that, I think there's nothing wrong with that. But for you, clearly there were, you were communicating with me. I was going, yeah, she's hopped out of this, show, but she just hasn't quite seen it yet. Yeah, that's, I get that. I get that. And I'm curious to know, because like for me, I finally discovering where I am and just overcoming fears is what advice do you give to someone when they're saying, but Scott, I just, I'm, I know what I want to do. And I have a clear, I have a clear vision. I'm wanting to, I have this product and I'm getting on social. I just want to make, but, but how, what do I go from here? Like everybody's selling things. How do I know what, what my next steps are? So read my book, I guess my, my, my short answer. Yes. The biggest thing is, so let's just talk. So let's talk about that one scenario. The one scenario is like a lot of people they're if they want to cross this chasm, I'm just like a monkey. That's got to, you want to move from one branch to the next, but you can't go to the next one until you let go of this one crossing mm -hmm. the chasm. You got to like, how are we going to cross the chasm? So what you, I mean, that's, if we're talking about a side hustle, you need to create the conditions of being able to do an active strategy. An active strategy is, Proof 
and the, the ability to demonstrate yourself that you your idea is valid. And more importantly, and one of the biggest sort of lessons I put in my book in the build phase. So there's build, give, grow, transform. Doesn't matter if you're doing a side hustle or building business is many people go, okay, I'm going to start on my own. They do the opposite and they just go out and they, they take massive action. And sometimes they win and they become these great stories. The majority of the bell curve though, is that they fail because they didn't actually test. They, this has happened to me my whole career. Scott, I have this product. I just made it. Can you go help me market it? And I'm always like, did you leave any budget for it? What resource do we have? And it's usually I've had to work with, that's what's given birth to everything I do is I've been given birth to how to do a lot with very little, right? I'm like, how do I market this with hardly any budget? That's been my MO. And I, that's getting, and at the time I'd be so annoyed by it, but now I'm like, holy crap, because of that gift, I am now mastered how to do lots with little. I'm, I'm ambitiously lazy. I'm like, how can I do the least amount of work and get the most amount of output? Given birth to groundswell marketing and sustainable growth marketing. So most people, when they have this widget or they have this idea, they go, I'm going to produce it. I'm going to create it. And then now I'm going to go market it. I think that's really backwards. There's a quote that I just love. That's an ancient Arabic quote, which says, dig a well before you're thirsty. Build an audience before you need it. Build demand. Trial balloon. I call it an active strategy. If you're thinking about making the leap, then build a runway. Build a financial runway. Build evidence. Build a community. Because once you've let go of... It's the reality of cash flow that you get from that. But the truth is you will never actually get the full evidence you require until you make the leap because you're divided. Your energy is divided. Your mm. energy is fractured. So you actually are unable. And this is a truth for me. I have a consulting practice. That's a seven figure consulting practice. And I'm building my community. I'm now shifting into courses and community. I am fractured. I felt it. I crashed. Like I'm like, I, this is Scott talking the truth about my own dog food, but I've got to make the leap. But the truth is I needed this money to be able to fund and build up. But I've got almost a thousand members in my community. I build it over a year. Can you imagine if I did it without doing that first? It's a different leap. But if you have a thousand people that are already subscribing to you, following you, you've got an audience. I've got a pretty sizable audience. I've been building for a long time. It makes it a lot easier when I release a book. It makes it a lot easier when I release a course. So those are things that you can do that give you confidence. Because what you're really talking about is, do I have the confidence to see it through? So you need evidence. You also need the reality of cash flow. So if you have a family and stuff, you've got to be a little bit more considerate about this. And you got to expect that it's going to not go the rate. If you're guesstimating, going, I'm going to do this and I hope this works. Hope is not a strategy, of course. It's like you need to have repeat evidence of going, oh, I already know that I had to get a 5% uptake on the total people I talked to to do this. That to me is you need an active strategy and you need to find a way to demonstrate that and be very intentional and narrow. Pick one thing, build an audience of people you love that are connected to the values that you have. That to me is to be nothing more important than building your audience. Okay. All right. So I, so prepare ahead. It's if you're going to, obviously, if you're going to leave your job and you want to start your own business or get into real estate or something like that, you want to make sure you have eight months of living expenses or a certain amount of month living expenses, whatever the recommended amount is, you want to have a plan ahead. So it's, if I'm going to sell something, I need a list. I'm not going to just go create a widget and then go find a list and start selling it. It's really planning that runway, as you said, ahead of time, which is brilliant. I love that. I love Most that. Most people underestimate the amount of time it takes to marketing and <laughs> the attention is collapsing. It's harder to, than ever to market. It's never been easier to market and it's never been harder to market. Everyone can be a marketer. I'm posting stuff on social media. I'm a marketer. Oh, really? Great. How, like the, it, to me, it's like for somebody trying to navigate marketing now, it's like, it is getting harder. I mean, people out there listening are finding they're posting stuff and getting less and less people responding, or it's an arms race. Who's got pandas going down slides with shotguns. It is an AI is going to actually create this massive sea of sameness. The challenges ahead of, of like really thinking about marketing yourself in the traditional way is you need to make a huge shift. Think of it like a seismic change is happening. What has created the seismic shift has been COVID, has been lack of trust, the lack of trust that's going to come on even more so with AI and fake content. There's going to be people writing books that aren't even experts on marketing. They're just good at prompting, right? There's also lack of trust in marketers are liars. If you go Google, I think that's one of the top things. Marketers are liars, right? Because the people, the marketers overinflate because they just want to get sales and people are disappointed. How many times have you been marketed something and the best it ever was the day they marketed it? And then over time, it got worse. Your relationship, the, what they were serving, Right. This is creating this huge collapse. So I call it the title shift. It's the title of my next book, which is we're moving from the age of attention 
So all this attention of likes, comments, and followers, and people are going, I have a thousand followers. I'm good to go. No, because you aren't really captivated audience. They're just they're not even, you, the algorithm is actually working against you. They might even be able to be reaching them. There's all these different factors. For moving from this age of attention where Trump got in power with it, you think of all the different like TikToks and videos and they're getting shorter. Our attention spans are getting shorter. That's why they're 15 second reels and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's like, we're like being bombarded. So now you're going to try to market in this world where people have more money than you. They've got bigger audience. They've got spinning pandas going down slides. Come on, that's got to feel exhausting. I just did a podcast with the gentleman, Mark, who wrote the book called Belong to the Brand. And yeah. it's about, it's the last next marketing strategy. And I loved it because I'm like, that's what my book's about. I'm like, oh my God, we're both talking about the same thing. Building a groundswell, building an audience, building a community is your antidote of no AI can create a community. If you're somebody that's making impact, you're probably going through what I described before, move, change, transform. So if you're trying to move energy, you're trying to sell things, that's very functional. I'm just moving stuff. That's where most people are selling products, shoes or whatever, right? If you aren't saving money and helping to make money and stuff, that's basic. But the level that most people are trying to aim towards is word of mouth, which is change, right? I'm change agent. I want to change you from being a PC owner to now a Mac user. I'm trying to change your behavior, right? That's where a lot, but if you're in transform, you'll be a real impact, human impact, and you're listening, you have a baked in advantage. It's called a growth loop. A growth loop is what a groundswell is. is imagine the more you market, the more you add output, like the exponential output you create. How does that happen? Okay. Think of a funnel. Funnel as a visual, not the actual funnel that people are thinking in their minds. Sales funnel that we consider, yes. Funnel was actually, no one did hijack the actual funnel, which is a strategy of demonstrating okay. numbers. That's okay. actually how it started. A funnel, a sales funnel was a visualization of data. If the funnel was at the top is awareness, right? Consideration. Casting a wide net and then going. What's oh, that? You, I think you just cut out there for a second. Okay. It's like the casting a wide net, reaching a yeah. lot. And then funnel at the end. top of it is awareness. So that's where people are considering conscious of you. The mm -hmm. next is considering, oh, I think I should use that coaching business. The next one is comparison. Oh, she used Jill or Scott. And then commitment. The, so the numbers slowly wane, go down from there. So when you think of it, most people in marketing growth, think, I'm just going to keep getting more people, more awareness, more attention. I'm going to throw more money on ads, throw it at the top. The first place you got to look is why are people leaving? Uh -huh. If you have to master and own and be honest with that, because if you're, I was going to try to do the math of if you got leaky, if you're trying to pour water and it's leaking, it takes more energy, more time. And the bigger those, and if there's leaks there, they're probably more going to sprout. So you want to get it early, get the monster while it's small, they say. So those, just because you got only one or two leaks, that means there's a reason and there might be more as you put more water in. So figure out the leaks first before you go to kind of get more growth. And that's that funnel thinking a little bit. It's like, think of it, not like the funnel, at click funnels. It's more just in terms of a visualization of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're thinking about growth, that's one of the first places you need to go to create growth. Now a growth loop, for people that are making impact, it's about transformation. Okay. So I'll go back to move, change, transform. When I heard a quote that Tony Robbins said to me was life's happening for me. Uh -huh. it, moved me. it was moving. Right. And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, when you hear a song and they say it moved you, it's very internal, but you don't tell the world. If I went and bought this and they delivered headphones, it, it, it was like what I needed. It was at the right price, the right product, the right time. That's the classic marketing. I don't tell the world about it. I'm like, I bought it. But then I changed. I went from a right guard user to a old spice. I moved my hand across and I changed. I changed because the smell is better. The offer is better, whatever it is. I now changed from a mark, from a PC to a Mac. That's where word of mouth lives. I listened to Tony Rob, I bought, read Tony Robbins book, Awaken the Giant Within. It changed me. When people ask them, oh yeah, you got to go. This book did amazing one numbers for me. That's where word of mouth lives. Okay. There's another level. When I went to a Tony Robbins event called UPW, now, I'm not the kind of person that's, I'm pretty passionate about what I'm talking about, but I'm not one to grab people. And I, after that event, I was compelled, like a Jehovah's Witness, grabbing <laughs> people going, you need to go to this event. And I'm like, and I'm recognizing this, looking at this pattern going, there it is. That's a growth loop. Even I am, am impervious to its power. Because when you transform, you want others to experience that. You want other people that share your values, you want to bring them in. That is think of shift your thinking from you're trying to build your purpose, going back to your purpose statement, 
we're thinking about our purpose going, my purpose is to talk to that target audience. No, think of your purpose going, who aligns with my values? There's a, I, I just dropped a podcast with David Ellison. He did this huge research over multiple years, proving that demographics is dead. Meaning the way you're currently targeting the advertising industry is targeting and you've been told and taught and culturally taught how to target is wrong. Think about this. When you buy on values, when you, I value this brand because it represents something to me, right? I drive, this is a a brand. This is a brand that I created. This brand, it connects with the audience of bites letters and motorsports activists that are really in the backcountry because they all share the same values of getting out there, freedom, sovereignty, all that kind of stuff, right? Those are values that connect that brand, right? Think of your values, the shifting to who you want to serve and would love to wake up and serve as values that will transform the way that you show up and the energy you have for it. That growth loop is other people are also going to then bring the same people, the same values to you. They're going to do the work for you. They're going to be Mm -hmm. compelled to go. You need to work with Jill. Oh my goodness. She is amazing. We experienced it. Didn't we at mindful marketing on Sundays, people Mm -hmm. started coming in droves because they're going, I heard they show up on stage going, I heard about you. I heard you guys talk about this crazy topic about mindful marketing and nature and things. I just had to be part of it. And now that I'm here, I'm like, I found my people. How many times every Sunday did I hear somebody going, I can't believe this group existed. Oh my God, do I feel at home? I'm coming every Sunday. Like, totally, true? totally true. And I think the thing that also I remember about that, which is where you created community even more, was when you kept the room open after you said it's officially like over. And then you kept the room going. And by the way, Clubhouse is a an audible, an audio only app that you that is like a podcast, but it's live for those who don't know. And so you would do the kitchen table talk. Yeah, the kitchen ki- kitchen party. I called it. Yeah, kitchen party after. And so we just could be sitting around after and just sort of talking about things. And it was a more loose, more relaxed kind of experience. And people in the audience could just listen to our conversation. And I think people really liked that. They liked feeling like they were a part of something. And I think that's what I. If for me, what I would say is that the result, what do I want people to get is not, hey, watch my, subscribe to my channel and watch this amazing interview and connect with Scott and work with him. It's, I want people to walk away from every interview and say, I can do that. I didn't know that was possible. I want people to see something they didn't see, to see us, to have hope and to be inspired and then to be, to feel this need to act and to make a change and also to share it with others, to be able to help others improve and grow. So that's what lights me up is like when someone will say, my gosh, that interview really changed my life because I was struggling with this with my husband. And I watched that interview with that couple and I learned how to talk to him in a different way. Fantastic. That's that just, that's gold for me. That kitchen Um, party was an example of inclusion, community inclusion was behind the scenes and it comes down to a value. People value, think of that saying, it's a very origin story of like how the sausage was made. Well, what does that mean? It's, it's because they want to see the process. Some people value more about the fact that this dish that was served to them was milking some sort of Sherpa, milked this cat goat and hiked it down Nepal and it now is my cheesecake or whatever. The story is actually what they value about they'll pay twice as much for it because the story, right? That's marketing the process. That's a value. They're valuing the process or they're valuing the intention behind something or they're valuing your origin story. They're valuing what you're doing for the world. They're valuing the people that you're congregating. Again, if you really think differently about this and you really want to wake up with infinite energy and clear purpose, it comes down to values. It really is. We're moving into the value economy, which is going to be based on people buying values. They'll pay more for a Patagonia shirt, 30% more because it's Patagonia and they're giving back to me. Think about all your purchases. I can map it back to a value 1 million percent, except for commodities, not commodities. The ones that you're willing to pay a premium for big point of difference. Mm-hmm. right? Price versus like your differentiation price, right? So if it's playing a premium, now think of economic value, you're going to pay more for an experience, right? Time well spent. So we would spend, how much money would you spend? Think of the Tony Robbins events, right? The, ex- the experience. People pay a lot of money for it. People do. And it's, and people, I tell people about how many pain they're going, I wouldn't even pay that for, they're just losing their mind. I'm like, but you understand the experience. So there's, ec- there's an economic shift. So if you're trying to create a business, Think of yourself going, what experience can I create with the values that these people have? If you do, you could create a more economic profitability differentiator there, which is super powerful. But there's another level. If you transform someone's lives and they're never the same, I'll never, like, it doesn't have to be like transforming like Tony Robbins. It could be like a juice maker. 
I'll never make juice the same way again. I don't know. I could think of a million different ways, right? If you're at that point, people will pay an unbelievable amount of money because there's nothing that will compare to it. And it's like, it's theirs. Soon as it becomes theirs, it's part of them. And they want other people to experience it with them. Now, experiences they'll want to share, but the differentiator is transformation. The economic possibilities for people, and especially people that are probably your audience, impact creators, my ideal audience, they don't realize that they have the ultimate growth loop. They have the ultimate advantage. Most people culturally in their mind have the nonprofit thinking, or I want to play small because I'm, I don't want to be, make myself too big. Think of a flower. Does a flower shirk so that the bees don't find it? Like, fuck, think of nature. So what we want to do is we want to really rethink everything. I want to help people like let go of this nonsense. I I swear, like the, the fucking BS of most marketing. It's, it's so culturally ingrained. And it's conditioning you because you need to stay on the Ferris wheel of social media, marketing, and all these templates because it serves everyone else, not you. Be free of it. Come up with a way of marketing yourself on your own terms. Mm, Gosh, there's so many gems and nuggets there. Yeah, marketing on your own terms. And I think it is. It's so true. We get stuck in these loops sometimes, don't we? Gosh, I was thinking where I wanted to go with that because I'm thinking as like that, the idea of impacting others, the values that that I have. And when you said, look at my purchases and you promised you could directly correlate that with my values. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that because like things that I'll spend money on for sure. So for Um, example, the mic you have right now, you may have valued, I value that it's going to be high production. Deeper value is I want it. I want people to respect me because it's the best possible I can buy. I value that I'm going to give my craft is me the best or it could be, it was a different color and you go, I just like it because it's going to show up nicely on the screen. Different values, different reasons. You just have to really be honest, like how people actually yeah, can. Someone it. recommended this is the best to use for, for podcasting. So you and value it three it years ago. Possible. There you go. But I was, it was recommended. I looked for what people said about it and uh, it was the quality of the sound and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So you just, what you just described is, so trust. So going back to that whole, we're leaving yeah. the age of attention now in the age of trust. Think of what last time somebody that's listening, tell me the last time we asked yourself that you saw a trailer for a movie and it was so good. And you're like, oh my God, I can't wait to watch this thing. Let's do it. And then you watch it and it sucked. And yeah. you're like, fuck, and can you do it happen again? That's marketers, right? Overinflating something, making it pizzazzy, and it gets worse as you watch it, right? That's welcome to a lot of marketing and business, right? Then you go, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to go and look at the ratings. I'm going to get this, this, I'm going to look at the recommendations. That's going to be a safe haven to protect me from not having that. Oh, and then you find out that you watch this movie, Rotten Tomatoes, five, five tomatoes. And (laughs) it's It's because the wrong people like that movie, not your people. They don't have your taste, but a lot of people had that taste, right? That's one. Two is it can be gamed. Like you think of how many people go, I I like, I'm a, a best international bestseller author. And I'm like, you bought that. You didn't, it's actually like you gamed it. Like you think of stars and like people are propping it up. And so we don't now. So I'm saying this for you, mistrust, you mistrust it. You're going, yeah, okay. In the funnel. Okay. You've got recommendations, check the box. Like your trust is, we're all, we got the bullshit meter up. Like it's huge. It's like this right now. So then you go, okay, you know what? There must be a system out there that can categorically let me know and help me compare one to the other. IMDB, right? IMDB is like the example of comparison or on, on, on software, like comparing this versus that they do the work for you. They're doing oh, yeah, that. App. Yeah, I love that one. They're mm-hmm. trying to get a commitment going, we've already done the comparison for you, but they crop that for you. Right. And then you find it actually wasn't true. It doesn't, it's not a hundred percent. IMDB I just fooled me. Right. Cause they're like, oh man, is there anything there is circles of trust, right? Yes. Circles of trust is when I, someone in the plaque community, you trust them and you go, I'm going to me or Joe, I know you really want, I know your taste in, in, in movies. And I go, you're going to love this one. This is an incredible movie. We're moving to technology and a world of trust be based on mistrust, the collapse of trust. The, there's this incredible research that around the collapse of trust over time that's happening right now. And most people are pretty, they're feeling pretty down about it. Man, it just gets worse. I believe this is giving birth to what's going to be this incredible trust economy. And I'll give you an example, blockchain. It's a little ahead of its time. Blockchain is an example of technology that it's totally no trust is required. If you can do land titling with blockchain, you don't need a lawyer. Why? 
A lawyer was there to put in trust the money to ensure that both things happened, and then they just did disbursements. Blockchain removes that, right? That's an example of technology going in the direction where people don't trust each other. Both get, both guns are out, and they're going. I don't know. That's that's where this is going. So you think of also, I bought last. Well, like how we buy something on eBay or something, and you have the ability to isn't the money held until it's shipped or arrived, and you right. have all these guarantees, right? There's a, it's called extreme. That's called extreme trust. So think of Apple. I went to buy a, mo- a, sh- a song the other day and it goes, pops up and it goes, oh, you've already bought this. I'm like, oh, thanks. Thank you for not wasting my money. They could make billions of dollars on that. But what they're focused on is they're trying to instill trust that I don't no longer, I've removed friction um, from purchasing it because now I can trust that they're going to take care of me. That's where I want businesses to start thinking about building their groundswell is if you're ahead of, think about Graham and Gretzky, where's the puck going to be next? Not where it is. The next puck is going to be trust. How are you building trust with your audience, with your recommendations? People throw away their reputation like it's like crazy. And I'm like, personal brand and reputation is going to be the game. And it's going to be on the blockchain. And everything you do is already somewhat on video and traceable. So what you say and what you do is going to be tracked. Think of everything you say and do will be on the blockchain where you're going to be able to go. And if you've wronged your audience or whatever it is, there's going to be a, a track record of that. And so if you really think in advance, how can I build trust with community, with people, with my audience, with others, it's classic back to the old days where we trusted our neighbor. We took the, who should I buy from? What seeds should I get from my, it's like, we're back to the old days of really trusting our community, the people of trust. We're getting back to word of mouth. We're getting back to human connection because AI is going to accelerate mistrust. I think people are all excited about it. Like, oh man, you watch what's going to happen here. There's going to be. You won't even trust if this podcast is not a deep fake of Scott Martin. So we're going to experience a lot of pain, but I believe my belief is that on the other side of this is there's going to be a very exciting in like age that we're going to have live in extreme trust where it's rebirth. And we're not going to have to be like elbows up and protecting ourselves. It's to a degree, it's going to have an ability for transparency, right? A transparency of information. And I believe that marketers that move and follow my book a little bit, it's not a little bit, a lot, like they follow the book, they're going to move into a marketing direction was where the puck is going to be. It's sometimes marketing with this requires more energy, more time, but there's more trust. When you create more trust, you create less friction. And when you create more trust, you can create experiences. And when you create an experience and you're trying to change people's lives, there's an important word you want to say to yourself. Was it time well spent? Everybody's rushing for AI and automation. It's about Saving time and collapsing time and being automatic, it's dehumanizing. What what people really want is they, do you want to be rushed when you're going to buy a restaurant and the waiter's trying to get you out or you're on a call and they're trying to, you're trying to get a consulting and they're trying to go, okay, I got another call. That feeling of being rushed is not a great feeling, but knowing mm-hmm. that you've been heard, you're connected and they've got the time for you and it's time well spent. Even if it's short time, if they go, I, it's like quality, people are paying more for experiences of quality, transformations of quality. So it's really about time well spent. I think that is a, no, I love that. And I think the biggest takeaway I have had so far, many things that that you've dropped here is the thing about trust and our reputation going forward is that that's this whole point of this is as AI and everything comes forward is everything's going to be watered down. Probably at some point it's going to be content and information perhaps from what I hear what you're saying, is it's something anybody can find. It's something that can be reached, but how do you find accuracy and how do you know? And I think the one for sure thing that doesn't change is connection and community is that direct connection and trust with another person and having that reputation. And so it's so important that we have integrity and be and being authentic and being true to ourselves and to others. So that way we are, I think that's our calling card. Or that's our most valuable currency going forward, isn't it? Oh, and not so much how much we show up or who has the best prompts or who has the best 10, week, 10 weeks to this or any of these things. It's really about our reputation our, and our integrity. Reputation, is it built quickly or is it built over time? I think it's built over time and it's refined. I think, it, I think as we evolve, we get, yeah. That's where That's marketing is. Most people are, so their reputation is one thing. They think though they're not congruent because the marketing they're doing is short term. There's a connection. There's a connection there. Think about things that you could do that would engender trust, but not necessarily serving you on the short term. 
what do you decide to do? I think you need to do both. I'm actually about balance. You need cash flow. You need short-term objectives and long-term. But most people put it together like a soup. And they don't go, hey, I'm taking the short-term, but it's not going to affect our reputation or our long-term strategy. They don't actually challenge it as a challenger up against a long-term bigger vision of impact. It's a little bit of a zig sometimes. I get it. You Sometimes you got to pay the bills. You're going to do certain things that you don't want. But I'd argue if you keep connected to your epic outcome, you don't stray too far. You actually could architect it so it actually keeps you in a straight line. It's just by asking that question. But instead, we just we run after the shiniest next thing and we move in that direction. Go, I'll get back to that long-term thing later. It's yeah. like- it, that is the thing. That is the thing, right? The North Star. And I'm, I'm just blown away by all of this. And I think it's, as you said, just being, I think the most important thing to me, again, is that reputation, that integrity. And it reminds me of that phrase or what you hear is they don't, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Yeah. And sometimes in a sales pitch or when someone's pushing something and I don't know them and all of a sudden it may be one of our groups and you get a, you know, you get a, a direct message, a private message versus in the group. And it's, hey, Jill, you should check out this program. It would be great. I, you would love this. And I'm like, have I even had a conversation with this person before? And it's like, how do you, it's like meeting a woman at the bar and like saying, hey, you want to go home awareness. and get it on? Well, it's like, you got to walk through the steps. It's, you're right, emotional awareness. And how do we cultivate that where it's not pushy? And at the same time, it's just, I think it's consistent showing up. And then it's also being, a lot of people feel like I have to be in everything. So that way people see me. And then when I pitch something, they're going to buy from me because I'm everywhere. And it says that true, but it's to what degree are you there? Or are you just there a little bit? Like you're liking people's posts or you're doing this or you're doing that, or you're sending a little heart every once in a while. What I'm trying to say is that level of connection is where trust is built. Is it, how do you actually cast a wide net where you can actually really reach someone and have them feel like they can trust you without having that? I've spent time and I want to go into one other thing I want, because I know I'm going to start something else. So I don't want to start another topic here until you respond to that. It's about give. So it's think of what are you giving the world? What's your irresistible offer? The bigger the give, the more that actually can collapse time for trust, right? Think of this mm-hmm. equation, right? Connection times trust equals action, okay? Connection, personal brand. We're connected because we both like surfing, right? That's a connection. But trust is created over time when they see you post consistently. It might be, because other people are edifying you. It might be because they trust you because you've been showing up for them, right? But if you actually create a mechanism, this is what I call build, give, grow, transform. It's based on get, grow, keep. Get, grow, keep is the is foundation of how I built my marketing over 30 years. Based on Don Pepper's, get customers, grow customers, and keep customers. The problem with it is when you're thinking about get, you're going get, you're grabbing, like you're like the energy of it, right? That's why I started with build. Like I said, like first let's build the bowstring. It's going the other direction. It's like pressure going backwards. It's hard for most entrepreneurs. They want to just go get customers, but it allows you to aim and it gives you energy and you're going to leapfrog forward. And the double down on that is give. What's your give? So maybe their give is, let me show you how the sausage is made. I'm going to do a, a, I'm going to do every day. I'm going to show up and I'm going to show you my interventions with my marketing intervention. That's what I do in my community. The way I show up like that is go, you want to see how I live in my mastery? Put put someone who I've never met and help me, let me help you um, with solve a problem. Because somebody that's got a good script and can do a webinar doesn't necessarily mean they're in mastery. It just means they've got something memorized. Memorization (laughs) versus mastery is not in the same category, right? Mastery is you understand you can read the person and actually adapt all these tools, find the pattern, differentiate the pattern, and create a pattern for them that's going to serve them. That shows mastery of think of it as chef. First, you have to learn how to chop and be in the prep kitchen. You got to master that. And then you got to know what the ingredients are. And then you got to know the recipes. Then you start differentiating, going, okay, I'm going to make not lemon cheesecake. I'm going to make a guava cheesecake. And what the different recipes are. Now, eventually you're going to go, I'm going to create the guava cheesecake, white chocolate one. That's my own creation. It's no different than that in any level of mastery. So I would start with give is a concept I call give is the new get. It's instead of trying to get customers, the energy of asking yourself, if I'm going to market, excuse me, myself, I'm going to take a drink of water. If I'm going to market myself, it's think of the give, like the give started with you're seeing in freemium models, try it for you, the, pu- the puppy dog clothes, or that's, it, it's because it works. But if you think of a give, have you ever had a give where you go, here, try this, my book for free or my ebook, whatever, and you, then you get it and you're like, this is terrible. It's, and it was a gag. It was like a false give. Give, when I say give, I want to be really clear. Give doesn't mean free. 
give means extreme value and it, it you should feel mm-hmm. like that when you give it when you're truly giving something think about this if i'm really giving this to you if i have i think of when i gave my kids i can't remember it was like we'll say it's like one of the items in the house that we didn't want anymore we don't value anymore and they can feel it they're like you're just passing this off to me ever felt like that way when people give something to you they're just passing <laughs> it off to you it's like a, it's like a parlor trick but when you give and you're going here have this and you're like and you should be the feeling you should have is they should be paying for it. Now you're at the beginning of a good give. Ah, of, I love that. You want to, if you want to be competitive and you want to, if everybody's trying to think of all the money you've spent on marketing in your mind, anyone listening, all the money, all the wasted money. How many of you have wasted so much money on marketing? I've been there, right? And you were to shift it into what if we actually took that money and we actually made a better give? We invested in the build phase of some, building something that was like an incredible giveaway. How much you could collapse. Think of how much less marketing you would need. Think of how much better you would feel. Think of this going, oh my God, you don't want want this? I just spent six months building this fucking thing, right? I'm giving away 50 pages of my book that took me four years to write. 50 pages. No small thing, right? That's like basically a big section of my book. I'm like, rock it out because I want you to buy in. Then that's the difference. Are you, it's called buy versus buy in. There's a Chuck from Public Enemy. He says, people don't buy from you until they buy into you. You need to, if you want to get buy-in, one of the ways to get buy-in is build trust over time. You want to collapse it, create a massive give. How is it that you, have you ever met a neighbor that that came over and you moved in and they like came with a basket? That's a gift. What do you do? You're like, oh my God, like I have already, you've got, think of all the different times that's occurred for you. It's a human thing. And there's a, something about it. Soon as someone gives you something, what do you want to do? Reciprocate. Yeah. Well, isn't that interesting? Now they're the ones coming to you. Yeah. Think about the energy of this. Think if I'm, when I tell these strategies, I'm like, put your hand in your heart and go, am I being common sense? Does this feel right? Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, think a little more because none of this stuff is like woo woo. It's like laws of nature. I look at nature, waves, universe, whatever, all these laws. And I look at the, look at the trees, how they grow. It's an ecosystem. All bunch of trees grow different plants, right? That's yeah. you and your marketing, right? It's your marketing is just because everyone wants to be a fucking redwood doesn't mean you have to be. You can be your own fucking bush. Like, and it all works in the ecosystem. Grow on your own terms. So give on your own terms as well. What is it that you want? What's the fruit you want to give? Like that, what it does is it creates and initiates a different relationship, but if you make your gift really intelligently, meaning don't give and go, I gave a bunch of stuff and I didn't make any business back. You got to be smart about it. You got to create a strategy. So maybe your give is testing an experience. Like I'm going to give 15 minutes if you get an experience working with me or, and that might, it doesn't cost you, it costs you time. Yeah. Maybe, you know what I mean? It's a give doesn't necessarily be free. It could be, you can give a discount. Like I'm going to give you 50% off if you test it or something. I'm always don't like going to discounting, but I always look at value add. How can you make a gift that they experience a taste. I'll give you a live example. I'll give you a live example. And I think this is where you're talking about what you have cracked this nut is figuring out how to market without it being like feeling like marketing. This is exactly what you're talking about right now, what you said earlier. And before we wrap up, I do want you to mention again, what you're doing and we'll put all of the plugs and all of your ways to connect with you and your amazing community on Mighty Networks, as well as your new book and your website. And, but I, but Think about it like what I was thinking here is a way to engage and to bring people in and to add more value is to do regular Q and A's and actually bring in speakers that I've interviewed and have people give people that join a community the opportunity to ask questions and to be part of the kitchen table chat. That's exactly what I would do. And they get a chance to meet me. And then there's a special offer for them that that they can bring that's, if you can go into the place where money can't buy, you're in a great place. Think of, like where something that you give that nobody could just come in with a big bag of money and just buy it. Right. So I have, for example, it's a small thing. It's if you go to my community, you're an OG. You're one of my first people that joined my paid area. It's only 22 bucks a month. What I'm giving them is I'm creating this, these beautiful, you've got one. I think the geometric it covers, right? that was born from marketer, by the way, that was a concept that I tested over there. It went over. So that's probably something for us to talk about. Cause that was like, I got more PR ban and, and word of mouth from that experience of that one time I did it than almost any other thing I did on Clubhouse, by the way. We'll maybe divert and talk about that in a second. But 
this, what I do is I give this thing that you can't get this unless you are an OG. You've been invited to be an OG within my community. That is something money can't buy. You cannot have it without that. It didn't cost me a lot of money to do, but man, does it ever, it's a demonstration that I'm going, that I'm going, I want to honor you if you're willing to be early with me. So think of this as a strategy, your mm-hmm. gift. Think of when I was a client of this telephone company for 12 years. And I saw online one day, I'm like, wait a minute, they're making an offer that's tw- half the price of what I'm paying and it's better and they have better service. And I'm like, and I've been with them for 12 years. I had to, uh, basically, I got an argument with them. They basically were all, but you have to quit and then come back to get this. And I'm like, so your process, <laughs> is you're going to teach somebody new, better than me over time. This is how we think is market is conditioned. We're focused on that top of the funnel. That's why I say invest the next stage, which is grow. Right, nurture, said, your, nurture your existing clients and offer new things. Yeah, deeper the deep. Let's deepen the roots before we go for the fruits. Right. So we said give. Now he's thinking about investing and getting deeper. By doing that, what you do is you galvanize your inner circle. Your power of your storm is now not you. Now I have a. So when I gave all those lays to all you people, marketer or my mm-hmm. OGs, what did I create? I created a more powerful inner circle showing up on Clubhouse as a group. I just widened my inner circle. It wasn't Scott anymore. It was us. That's the groundswell in the community. It's because Mm -hmm. I want, I invested in you, not new people. So I did that. I made these great social posts, all that kind of stuff. That's me deepening the roots, right? It's like people think about grow as more. I say it's grow the roots before the fruits. You should grow deeper, not bigger. It matters because it's foundational. And then the last is transform. You have this foundation. You've initiated this relationship. Now you have a body of people that are going to let their guards down and that the ability to create time well spent doesn't require there's think of when you go to spy something or you're in an environment and there's a level of mistrust it's harder to break through with somebody right Mm -hmm. what tony does or you think about people that are masters at transformation they get to the point where you go you trust them that allows it opens the space for time well spent to then create a transformation experience because their guard is rightfully down because they're in full trust you need to focus on trust that is the most important investment you can make through this whole process. Because when you get to that, when someone, think of the level of trust when I buy a product and it worked, move. There's a little bit of impact, a little bit of trust. But then you changed me and it worked and it was even better. And I want to talk to people, that's deeper trust. But when you transform me, the level of trust, it's called intimacy at scale. It is, there is no more level of trust that you can actually, that I know of in business. And that level of trust means I trust Scott with all my heart about marketing, I'm going to put my best friends, my mom, and I'm going to put them in front of them. When you have that endorsement, you've created the growth loop and you created the groundswell. That's exactly it. And it's, I think what does Tony call it? Raving fans is another way to describe it, but it's basically the people who will, they're the ones who will write the, the, the testimonial for you. They'll tell everybody they know, they will, they'll yell it from the rooftops. And that's really amazing. Of, of raving fans though, my distinction is this. I do love that. It. it is exactly the same thing. However, now, tell me when you go, when someone goes, oh, you're just a fan of Tony Robbins. I'm like, I'm not a fan at all. I'm not a blind fan. I was using it more as a metaphor from a sale, what do they call it? From a sales point of view. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I see what you're problem. saying. The word yeah, fan. But they're right. They're, they're what they're describing. But I always have this thing with fan. The idea of fan is you're blindly trusting. Mm-hmm. You're like, you're no matter what this person does. Trust has, that means like if my team, if I'm think of a fan of of a sports team, you're a fan of a sports team, even if they keep losing, right? That is what they're talking about. It's it's like, it's cult-like and that's okay for a sport team. For a business, if you don't deliver a transformation and they're still following, you've got a cult. You don't have a, you don't have what I'm creating trust. Trust can be quickly lost if you are not showing up and delivering consistently. If I bring somebody in and you don't deliver that just because I'm a fan I might, you might, I might give me a little bandwidth, but you could lose trust very quickly. I believe it's a more ecosystem balanced approach to thinking. And then, and that's why I say that it's not, it's words matter. Not that's wrong. I'm just saying that is my language that I use to help people distinguish that because fan implies this person blind, and this blind trust, and like she I don't need to reinvest in them. Mm. If they're a raving fan, I'm like, and by the way, that's probably, there's some like of my that. My mother's a raving fan. She will love me no matter what I do or don't do. Right. Yeah. Cool. But that's about it. So what happens I'm- is if people go raving fan, they don't go my direction. What happens is 
they just assume blind and total loyalty. So you have and to continue and uh, constantly reinvest uh, in and re re reinvesting in the community and also just continue to live up to have it showing up authentically and with integrity and then just demonstrating that. Please. That's amazing. I'd love to continue this conversation. I think it, we should do definitely do a QA and a maybe start this idea uh, that I mentioned. It's been on my mind for a time, but I'd love to know if there's anything else you'd like to mention or cover before we wrap it up. And maybe we do another one and talk about other things too that we didn't get to. Sure, no problem. If they want my give, it's groundswellfreechapter.com. We can put it in the link of the okay. show. That's a free chapter and my community, groundswellinnercircle.com. And once you're in there, if you mention... And Jill it says they're for my community and I'll give you the invite to be an OG. It's, it's really inclusive. It's just more, I'm not just, I want to make it somewhat special where it's like people that share the values. I don't want someone to show up and go, Hey, I just paid my money. I'm going to be on an OG. I'm like, I want to vet the people that are going to be in this OG group because they're special to me. These OGs are representing the values that we create. And I'm going to do some amazing stuff with these OGs. Like this plans that I have, as long as they stay as an OG is going to be, as you know, me, it gets better with time. And that's- Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're always giving so much value. That's probably my second thing other than great community builder and oh, that nice. type of thing is this just adding value over the years. My gosh, brother, thank you. I want to thank you again for the time today. Say hello to Jillyfish for me. And then we'll see you at the at another I'll hitchhike or hitchback or what do you call it? I'll, I'll hitch on to one of the plat trip trips and come early or something and hang out with y'all. That'd be so. awesome. Can All I ask right. one thing before we finish? You bet. I want a shotgun. Ah. And yeah, I should have started with Aloha, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the way I start my podcast anyways. Yeah. Yes. You have to check out, everyone, you have to check out Scott's podcast too. It is amazing. Have you been doing it for almost five years, right? Five years now. Yeah. It's on season four, but it's five years because COVID made it a weird year or whatever, but yeah. And do you still have your, you have a magazine. Do you still do in the magazine? Yeah, Marketer Magazine, I've tucked it inside my membership of my $22 a month. It's a live magazine in there. But it's in, right now, it's like still very small, but it's like expanding. Yeah, but I have that. And I'm about to launch. I've got this huge project I've been working on with Guru Singh, about 26 hours of taping called The Mindful Marketer. So we we got it. That's a new course that we're putting out. It's really cool. Oh, I love Guru Singh. Oh my gosh, that's going to be amazing. And you did some interviews with him too. So definitely have to check that out. It's in your, oh, I think that's in your. The podcast interview I did with him, both of them are outperforming almost any other, like I said, Dave Navarro from the Chili Peppers. Who he's, <laughs> to me, it's an anomaly. And it just shows that people's appetite for hearing these things that are very different, but feel real and true is really big right now. It's this shift that we're seeing in thinking marketing. Wow. I'm excited to jump in some more myself. So we'll definitely connect there and also hopefully see you in Clubhouse soon on Sundays again. Yeah. Thanks well, so much, I'll Scott. Yeah. Thanks everybody for being here today. And remember, subscribe, share this and get connected. Take care. Thank you. See ya. Thanks.